We also have a variety of employee resource groups. Um, so um, these are sort of extracurricular groups that um, you can get involved with if you, are certain, if you have certain passions around, um, you know, I'm part of the women's um, networking group. Um, there's organizations for just about every, anything you can think of, um, the environment. Thank you. 
And that was the case. I think that was the case 10, 20 years ago. Uh, yeah. Anybody heard of Kevin Bentley? He was. He went into like uh, uh, telephone systems, broken telephone system, the social engineering.
and the charter that the pilot adopts them. Uh, these are not the only ones, there's a lot more uh, dark vulnerabilities out there. But the fact is now with technical controls, so they don't show up on a top there. But that doesn't mean you don't have yourself a uh, big So, uh, I want to make one more point for you others. Security is not just one team's issue, right? It's not just a bunch of guys. Thank you. 
tools now, which do static code analysis. Right? So as you as you're developing, as you're writing, as you're compiling um, and debugging on your machine, you're also doing static code analysis, which other people do. But they but they are, they are tools. There are many tools which may not catch everything. So it's still uh, important for you guys to have that mindset. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Right? I mean, we as developers have this you know, passion, right? We can really do it better. We, we, we have something. I don't like this part of that framework. I'm going to rewrite the whole thing by myself. So don't do that for authentication. It's very important, right? Authentication management, uh, session management is basically the key. This is how you authenticate. That's what We want to be using um, security protocols, right, for the data and stuff like that. So now TLS 1.3 is the, the 1.2 is the base that you should be using for HTTPS. Right? Anything below that is either deprecated or has already been uh, exploited. Right? So that's already been broken. Uh, this is a very specific attack. It's a bad. It's not very common, for example, right? So it's only if you're using uh, XML uh, parsers with a specific TTT uh, process in your system. You're uh, basically uh, open to this attack. Right? And it's very specific. They have left. Again, very, very easy to protect against because you can just turn off that XTP processing and uh, it will be fine. Some of these have like, uh, also a stack vector. What, what NIST has done, or OWASP has done, is also listed out how hard it is to exploit the impact is, right? So the impact of most of these are pretty severe uh, because once you have your data breached, uh, you, know, you lose trust in the market. Right? People don't want, to, don't want to come to your site anymore. They want to move away from you because if you look at things like Equifax, uh, Equifax, uh, 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 breach, people move to where? Right? So it's, it's, it's a lot of financial cost, but it's also a cost to your reputation. So, uh, but it is pretty difficult because they have kind of 
target the attack specific to your uh, website or your application. So it's not very common. It's not something you know a kitty script can go after, and you can't automate these kind of uh, the XML. Some of the, some of the other attacks, for example, the, the SQL injection attack is automated now. There are tools out there, firms of attackers use. And it'll basically crawl through your website, go through every single page, and try to inject SQL and figure out which one, which one. Uh, uh, broken access. Uh, broken access is basically, um, again, right? So um, those um, uh, basically making Especially like your know, highly confidential data, like highly sensitive data, things like things with authentication somehow. Uh, so the case being like a hidden field, right? And uh, don't don't kind of don't think that just because it's in a hidden field, that anybody can read JavaScript. Once it's out of your servers, it's on the client side. Any any browser can go and look at your uh, plain text JavaScript. So don't fasten, uh, you know, hidden passwords. Uh, you know, things you don't want people to be able to see or manipulate. Don't pass that. Right? Don't pass that to the clients so, uh, because that's very it's very easy. To send that payload back to your server, and your server may not do the proper validation. It may accept it at face value because it is your website. Person, so now you're trying to you trust all the data that is coming from them. Don't do that. It's basically we work in lab zero trust. Right. Um, Find through these. Perfect. Um, security misconfiguration. Um, Not just you know, like highly critical data, but also pages that you may not like reports, for example. And you may think, hey, these are public reports, but behind us. After that, make sure. So, for example, your API calls. Make sure you authenticate. Right? Don't trust any API call which comes to you. Right? Make sure that they are allowed to see that. So one of the common um, problem may be, okay, uh, their financial statement, their summary, right? So you may have uh, their API call statement ID, right, in your URL. Well, if somebody goes and manipulates that statement ID, they may be able to read somebody else's summary, account summary, somebody else's balances. That. What are you exposing? So even though you may be using HTTPS, your URL is still plain text. And whatever information you put in that URL can be manipulated. And if you're not verifying that, if you're not verifying that, that ID that the person passed for that resource, they have access to that on every call. Well, they can easily manipulate it. And they can get in and what happened, uh, actually recently, Uh, Cross-site scripting, um, another big vulnerability, um, which is basically what they do is inject kind of injection uh, vulnerability to, uh, into your main page that other users, will, when they go in, will run it and expose data to the attacker. Right. So uh, one of the common way to exploit this is, let's say you have a lot of websites have comments field, right? They have comments. Like uh, you know, you, you you have an article or something, and you want to comment on the article, and you will add comments there. What's going in the comments? People may start injecting JavaScript into it. The JavaScript might be simple as if it's a, behind a paywall, uh, use the name and password. One of the vulnerabilities here was uh, with British Airways back in 
last year. So British Airways used, uh, which was just basically doing their payments, right, payment processing. And what they were doing was British Airways website was injecting JavaScript, which then was going and doing the payment processing. Oh, so what, what the attackers did was they did not hack British Airways website. They attacked this third party processor. And they injected three lines of code in that JavaScript. And all it did was uh, scrape the, uh, their name and their CCD number. Right? So all the pertinent information about payment, they scraped it, sent it to another, another uh, their, their own website. Right? Um, Third-party applications you are injecting into your page are they secure? A great um, uh, attribute SRI, which is basically what it does is it hashes the JavaScript and it compares that hash value with it makes sure that the you know, that the hash value that uh, was uh, that's that you're expecting is the one that this file. Is a security for us when we are coding and something like that is a part time job. Right. They are thinking about breaking into your system and stealing your money, stealing your identity. That's all they do. Right. So they will always be a little ahead of you. We just want to make sure that when they do, hopefully they don't, it's not a big data breach. If we can recover from it, we don't repeat the same mistake again. So these mistakes have happened, and they will keep happening, but we have to be mindful of that. Try to stay ahead of them. Okay. Uh, insecure deserialization. This is uh, not very common, because it has to be custom, right? They have, they have to know about your framework and what you're doing, and it's basically um, like you get, you get an object from the because they've already authenticated. You don't do any verification, so you may have a JSON payload, for example, and you will convert it over to a, uh, a native object. Or a, a C-sharp object, and you'll uh, deserialize that into that object. Well, if, if they can manipulate, and they can, because it's a client-side code, they can put more information into that payload than what you're expecting. So when you do these, uh, you may have a, a buffer overruns or other uh, unexpected behavior that they may be able to exploit. But again, not very common because they have to know the internals of your system and custom tailor their attack to that. Uh, using components with known vulnerabilities, and this is actually quite common. This is basically, if you know, anybody know about Panama Papers? Right? Panama Papers was basically an attack on um, a law firm out in uh, Panama for big, you know, wealthy people. They were hiding their money, creating shell companies and things like that. They were running their website on WordPress, and they were using Struts framework basically came out with a patch because it had a known vulnerability. Uh, this company did not apply the patch, so that patch, that, that vulnerability was out in the wild, open for three to four months. Uh, and once it's the attackers will go, hey, there's a vulnerability. All the, all the information is already out there. I don't have to do anything. The code is already out there. I'll exploit it. Let me go and try it and see where it works. And then went ahead and, and they found it and they attacked the site and they were able to get all this information. Um, so again, patch systems, make sure uh, if you're using JavaScript, there are the tools out there which will scan and as part of your DevOps, will kind of go through it and figure out if there are any vulnerabilities in that in that to the latest library. So you should have that process, right? 
wherever you go to, wherever you go to work in the company, make sure they have some kind of process that they're scanning their JavaScript. Uh, they're using JavaScript. Make sure that they're using the latest libraries and that there are no uh, vulnerabilities. If, if you're using any frameworks, any codes, things like that, there is actually a site out there, CVE, right? And they publish. So go through that and see if any framework that you are current version of, on current version, if there are any vulnerabilities out there, talk with them. And the last one is insufficient logging and uh, monitoring. So as I said, breaches will happen. Right? They, uh, we can't protect ourselves from every single known attacker and things like that. What we can happen, we respond fast. And the only way we can do that is if we have um, logging and monitoring. Right? We have sufficient logging, logging and monitoring in place. Figuring out. So let's say you find out that you have a vulnerability in your website. Nobody has told you about it. You have found it yourself. You have to go fix it. But you still need to know if there was a if somebody actually exploited that already. So you can know your client. You can inform your clients to maybe go change it faster. You may uh, you may have regulatory requirements. So if there's a I think part of the GDPR, which is a but if you have a data breach, you have to inform uh, the clients, right? Or um, even the government, in, in some cases, that there was a data breach. And, uh, and so that, uh, this is interesting, right? It takes an average of 191 days because people don't have enough one monitor out there. People don't have logging, they're not, they're not they don't know something came in and stole it until that they found all their data on dark web. Okay. Uh, so you have to have uh, that so you can do troubleshooting, you can go back and you do the forensic analysis and figure out if. So I know I went through this really fast. <laughs> Not, I don't know what's trying to add. So if you have any questions, feel free. So, are companies more reluctant to not use third parties if they can't? No, so, so, it, so the thing is, that it's a double-edged sword, right? It makes your life easier. You don't have to reinvent the wheel if there's a library already out there doing it for you, right? If there's a third party, especially if it's open source, you know, it's been vetted, lots of developers are working on it, so they want to go out there and they want to use those products because Anybody can contribute to that. Anybody can, you know, go and change the code and stuff like that. And it may take a couple of PRs, a couple of pull requests for people to figure out, hey, somebody injected. Until then, those companies have already started to inject it into their uh, uh, build pipeline are vulnerable to that attack. So there are ways to uh, remediate that. Some of them is using the hacks, for example, so you know that the, the code that you were expecting to compile by, or just uh, what we do at Schwab is we, inter we, uh, we have our internal repository for third party libraries. Right? So we take, we, we say, okay, we are interested in this open source library. We'll go through a security review, and then we will download it and put it into our internal repository. And so every time we're building, we're taking it from the to you know npm or other uh, packet stores. Yes. Uh, since 2017, any changes in what vulnerabilities cyber criminals are taking advantage of? So again, these are the these are the only ones. And so when the next one happens, maybe I think the next review will probably be 2020 or 2021. This list may change. But until then, I mean, right? And I think, well, I said social engineering is still 
like top top one. They don't even mention that here. There's a human factor associated with all this, right? They're only talking about technology here. Uh, education comes in very handy. Right? Things like phishing email. Don't click on blindly on email, right? You know, if, if somebody sends you an ask for the you know the, the issue with your account, go directly to their website. Don't don't go from that email. Right? Because a lot of those emails are built to basically extract information out of you. Out of you. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, they have sophisticated attacks. And the, the thing is, a lot of these attacks are, cheap, are uh, compounded attacks. They're not each other, right? They may use, they may use uh, uh, like broken session with, uh, you know, to basically go into your system. All the uh, vulnerabilities you showed here today, do they all have like fixes or like yes. preventative measures? Absolutely. So all actually has code mm -hmm. um, that they have. I'm just give me the kind of summary of it, mm -hmm. but they actually have code on what they and, and fight for the, you know, for the vulnerabilities. And just for curiosity's sake, what, why wouldn't a company mandate that a developer like puts fixes in between their code for this? Ah. Right, right, uh, because it slows down development. Interested in features. Okay. They don't want to get those bright new uh, features out in front of their clients so they can get new business. Right. It's only when they start getting attacked, or a lot of companies are still, you know, they'll run. For example, they'll hire third-party companies to do penetration testing, mm -hmm. and whatever the penetration testers find. Uh, they'll go remediate that. But that's So the companies are knowingly not knowingly it's just ignoring that, uh, security vulnerabilities. Well I would I would I would make them complacent. I'd say that they have um, and security may be there but it's not top of the priority. Yeah. Top of the priority is for them to make money. Yeah. How can they make money? Most money is not getting breached in the <laughs> They don't think about the cost. Sure, sure. They lose, a data breach will cost them a lot more mm -hmm. than uh, the profit they'll make out of that feature. Right? Yeah, I think, uh, especially with financial companies, mm -hmm. uh, you know, high, highly vulnerable aspects of the economy, those are definitely are going becoming more. You know, if you talk about the number one things that keep CEO, uh, the CEOs uh, up at night, they'll set security number one. <laughs> what does it take for you guys to vet like, some new patches or some new software? Like, How long does it take? So yeah. we, we have a whole governance process for open source, for example. Um, and so we're just talking about not, not off-the-shelf uh, commercial products. So so you're a developer and you, you, uh, you're working in uh, uh, C Sharp or JavaScript or Java. Java uh, will do what you need it to do. Uh, then you have a governance process. So you can go through our our, our internal website. Already approved, right? But if it's not the approved state, then you have to go to governance. Governance will basically look it, right? Is there something else we already have? That kind of Not, then wait. It does that make your life easier, faster, uh, cheaper, and uh, do all those? Then we bring that. And that process can take anywhere from two days to a month. And once those, once we do the security review of the package of the library, we bring it in. So, and this is a great, great question. So, I have a team, right? So, in general things. Self driving cars to IoT, right? Um, using Linux, 
from 1990s bills with no security protection at all. Part the features. If you want to get this thing to work, part of the market. Right? If you look at things like uh, your doorbell, easy to break. Right? It's because, and there are known vulnerabilities already out there. Things like, uh, and it's, it's like your, 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 your smart speaker. Right? So you may have Alexa, for example, or Google. You can listen to frequencies you can't even hear. So somebody from the outside can can play a frequency, and if you have doors which are tied to your uh, smart speaker, they can ask the smart speaker to open the. So uh, people are not just <laughs> starting to think. Of the wild west out there so I would be very careful if you have a home camera and you installed in your room or your apartment and then totally forgot about it it's still there you haven't passed it up it's probably open to all kinds of vulnerabilities all kinds of attacks right now so uh, go home Cross-site scripting. Yeah, just find that in more technical detail because I, as someone who isn't. So, so, so the John the British Airways basically uses uh, right. So they don't process their own credit cards. Right? They use another company to do the, uh, do the. And they have this JavaScript basically, which. Um, so. Uh, you know enough about JavaScript? Have other JavaScript? You can have your JavaScript run other JavaScript from other companies, right? And you can inject the third party JavaScript into every single page. So, um, I don't even remember what it was doing, but, but the uh, attackers were basically were able to go into The third party is JavaScript. That's all they did. They never caught it. The, the, guy, the guys who three lines of code. Those three lines of code, all they did was read your credit card information, your uh, your and your C, your your number, right? That's the three digit number you you type in the TPD. They're basically. Um, sent it over to their own website, which was like a valid website. So if you looked at the JavaScript, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, they're taking the, they're processing it over there too. Whatever. How did they get it into the third party? Uh, the third party? JavaScript. Under the pipeline, the DevOps pipeline. Oh. And I don't know all the details on that. Very common uh, uh, vulnerability now. A lot of companies have the same one. It's just three lines of code. So, yeah, you can find it and you can try to inject it. You get a problem. Anything else? Oh, great. Hey, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come in. And